Hello, uh, welcome to today's webinar on how to say no and yes to academic service uh, requests. Uh, this is my co-presenter. Um, hey, how you doing? Anyway, uh, the way that today's presentation will go is in a second, I will disappear from the screen and pull up today's slides. And then we'll walk through uh, uh, some sort of major points of discussion. And uh, at the end, I'll come back. And if you have questions or thoughts or um, uh, issues that you want to discuss, just type them in the box that's on this side of your screen, and we can talk about those when I return. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, move to the slides, and I will see you back here in 25, 35 minutes. Okay, so Oops, you don't need to see that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, all right. So today's webinar um, is, as I said, uh, how to say yes, how to say no and yes to academic service requests. And the reason that we titled it like this is because uh, I think that a lot of us, especially as new academics, are encouraged to say no, 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 no matter what. Uh, but we don't spend a lot of time talking about how to say no. And we also don't spend enough time, in my view, talking about when it's appropriate to say yes. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So on top, first, we're going to talk about what counts as service. And when I say what counts, I'm, I'm talking about what counts uh, mostly in terms of your job, uh, what job requirements are. Next, we'll talk about the politics of service uh, and the way that service expectations come down, especially hard on people in, uh, on women, on people of color, on, um, on queer faculty, right? We're often asked to be the one of our kind on every committee. So our service requests are often uh, pretty intense. So we'll talk about that today. Um, and then discuss how much service matters to your career. And this is, of course, going to vary based on the job you're in and the expectations of the uh, of your department and your tenure or your contingent position. But we'll talk a bit about um, how to think about your career outside of the rules of the institution you're in and think about what is going to matter to you going forward. Uh, and then in terms of deciding whether to say no or yes to service requests, it's important to figure out what we value, what are our goals and our priorities that uh, that shape the, um, the choices that we make. And then we'll end by talking about when you should say no and how, and when you should say yes and how. And then we've got some further resources uh, from Ideas on Fire to uh, if you're looking for more information or more ways to think about some of these questions. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so when we're talking about service today, I'm talking about three kinds of service. The first is I think the most, um, on the day-to-day -day level, the thing that's confronting us the most, and that's department and university service. Things like advising students, building curriculum, working on committees, uh, being on committees that have to do with, um, with uh, uh, general education for the university or, um, or something like that. So that's the kind of service I think we're mostly uh, familiar with. Then there's the service that we do for our professions, things like peer reviewing for journals, uh, for conferences, editing journals, co-editing books, things like that. This professional service is uh, a different kind, but it's really important to consider it as service, especially if you're looking to build a career outside of where you are right now. And then finally, there's the service that often universities say they care about, but don't. And that's community service, the activism and organizing and volunteering work that we choose to do to give our lives meaning and also to be active and involved members of the places where we are. Our jobs are only one part of, of our lives, and that's important to uh, keep in mind. All right, so what counts? When we're talking about what counts as service, it's important to think about what counts as service for your career, um, but also what counts as service for your life. So I think it's important to ask what counts as service, um, ask your chair of your department, like what's really relevant and important um, in terms of that service. Uh, for most of us, especially for new faculty, we're given a couple of service assignments, maybe something in the department. Um, and uh, if you're lucky, your chair will protect you from 
uh, university level service uh, for as long as possible, usually till after tenure or till after you've been there for a minute. Uh, one thing uh, to think about, we talk about what counts as service is uh, the specific issues facing adjunct faculty. Uh, service is not part of the requirements for adjuncts. You're getting paid per class. Uh, sometimes there's a desire as an adjunct, I've been an adjunct so I know this well, to feel like you fit in and you're part of the community. And part of that means doing things like advising students or doing independent studies or you know, uh, being at faculty meetings. And that's stuff that makes us feel as adjunct or contingent faculty, like we are an important part of the workplace, the, the work that's happening there. That said, uh, that service work doesn't quote count for anything. It doesn't make it more likely that you'll turn that adjunct position into a full-time gig. It's very easy to imagine that if you just get involved in service, they'll understand how um, uh, that they'll understand how important you are and how vital you are to the institution, uh, that's a dangerous road to go down. So when thinking about taking on on service requests as an adjunct, realize that it doesn't, it probably won't count in terms of getting you a position where you are. That said, it can be something you add to your applications for other jobs that, that shows that you have the ability to do administrative work. I will say that that having been on job search committees, uh, that's not the most important thing uh, for academic jobs, but if you're looking for jobs that are more service oriented or um, staff positions that can, you know, sometimes that service can count. That said, uh, and this is again, going back to why sometimes you wanna say yes to service, it's important to think about how service relates to what's important to you in your life. Um, so what counts there? And if, building a career and building the profession is important, that means that service, you know, service work for the annual conference or for the journal in your field, that that service is really important. Uh, so, and, and so it counts, that you know, generally will count for job stuff, but it also will count for you. And then also what counts for your life. One of the things I ask myself before saying yes to any service request is, what will this service work do? Will it make the university stronger? Will it make my community stronger? And how do I want to spend my time? What's the community that I want to that I want to serve? That I want to make stronger through my work. So what counts matters both on a, a sort of a professional level, but also on a personal level as we figure out the lives we want to live. So there are also um, a lot of politics of service that um, that affect different members of the faculty more than others. So if you're watching this webinar and you follow Ideas on Fire, chances are you are, um, you know, you are aware of the, these kinds of issues. But I know that for myself, being um, a queer woman on campus, uh, I'm often asked to be on faculty um, panels um, about LGBTQ life on campus, the, you know, Campus Climate Advisory Committee, uh, can I advise these five different student organizations that are somehow tangentially related to sexuality? Those kind of requests come in a lot. Um, faculty of color, sometimes uh, for a new African-American faculty member, you might be the only one in your department and every student wants to work with you immediately uh, because they, they're so excited to see someone who looks like them. So th these kinds of, these are kinds of service requests that that fall much more heavily on marginalized faculty members than they do on um, cisgender, straight, uh, white men faculty who uh, are not called upon in the same way, but the service requests they're getting are often sort of higher um, level administrative work that can help their careers in a different way. So it's really complicated because uh, one wants to resist those calls, but also, um, but also sometimes that's the work that feels most worth doing, right? So uh, when you're asked, to, when you're um, just be prepared to be approached for all of these extra service requests, given your multiply marginalized positions and be ready to think about what you need and what's gonna help you in your life and career rather than, um, than what's gonna help the university. Otherwise your time can get completely sucked away, sucked away from you and from your other priorities. 
So when we're talking about service, I wanted to just stop and chat a little bit about the difference between formal service and informal service. So formal service is the committees that you're gonna be on at the university, you can be the faculty senator, uh, your, those kinds of, of formal service requests. Um, be prepared to be asked, especially if you're new and you occupy marginalized positions, because every committee needs a woman, a person of color, a queer person. And if you're one of few on the campus, you will get asked over and over and over again. So figuring out what your priority is and the kind of service that you want to do that helps you live the life you want to lead is really important. There's also um, informal service. Uh, and I've talked about this a bit already, but when you're one of the few faculty of your identity category, you get asked for a lot by students. And this, I think, is important to consider service and to articulate a service when you are talking to your chair or to administrators to make clear that the part where you have, you know, a dozen students who um, sort of really need your mentorship, that's a lot of time. I teach gender, women's, and sexuality studies. The emotional service load of this work is really intense. And we as a department have really worked at trying to articulate how this is service, partly so that we can um, uh, use this argument to move away from other kinds of service and also to get support for the kind of service we do. I mean, it's really, it can get really intense and emotionally really challenging especially when a lot of the issues our students bring to us are ones that we face ourselves. So when you think about balancing your service teaching and research load, uh, make sure that you balance the kind of demands that you get from students um, in that service load. So how much does it matter to your career? This depends entirely on the kind of institution you're at and that uh, the institutional priorities. Uh, the general rule of thumb is that the only thing if you're at a research institution or one that aspires to be a research one institution that the only thing that matters is research uh, and that service and teaching matter mostly as boxes to be checked there's no way to know if that's actually true though unless you talk to your chair about it your chairs um your chair though keep in mind is invested in you doing a certain amount of service because there's a lot of work that it takes to run a department so the chair is not always the most trustworthy narr narrator about this. So I suggest also uh, talking with faculty members who are a few years ahead of you, ones who've gone through tenure or contract renewal to give you an idea of uh, how important it actually is. And sometimes it matters differently at different levels. Uh, in a lot of small liberal arts schools, for example, service is one of the most important things when moving from associate professor to full professor. I didn't used to know that. And when I learned that, I was like, oh, that makes sense because of the way liberal arts schools are organized uh, and have, um, you know, have so many kinds of different service that they expect from faculty. So ask people um, to be honest with you about how important it is. And if it's not important to your career um, and it's not important to you, uh, really strongly consider saying no. All right, so when you make those decisions about saying yes or no, uh, the first thing you've got to do is think about your goals. And um, this uh, sounds kind of obvious, but it surprises me how little time most of us spend, um, often because we're so busy, thinking critically about, um, about what we actually want out of our career. So first, it's important to think about your short-term goals. What are your career goals looking um, one to three years ahead? Do you have uh, do you think you want to stay where you are? In which case, your the, you know, the service decisions you make will likely be around what service will get you tenure. Um, if your desire is to get out and of where you are and move to another institution or another kind of job, if that's a research institution or a research job, research is going to be most important and service takes backseat. So think about what your career goals are for the next few years. And that will help shape the kind of service requests you say yes and no to. Also think about your long-term goals. So do you plan to stay? If you plan to stay and build where you are, uh, your service might look really different. So for example, uh, I teach at a, a school, uh, a regional public university in uh, just outside of Baltimore, Maryland. And uh, people in a bunch of different departments have been talking about building a public humanities program and how do we connect 
teaching and research with uh, Baltimore City. And when I think about whether or not to be involved in that, I think about my own long-term goals. Um, for me, I'm gonna stay in Baltimore, I'm gonna stay at this job, and then I have to ask myself, is that the kind of work I wanna do? Um, do I wanna build that at this institution? Uh, and for a lot of us, the answer is yes, right? This is that the institution is a big part of our lives and we wanna spend it making it better or working to redistribute power and resources to communities and doing something to, uh, uh, to fight against the extractive uh, tendencies of institutions, right? So that, if that's a long-term goal, right, then you might wanna say yes to something like that. Um, but if you're looking to change uh, positions or you're looking to build a life where the institution is a place you go work and the rest of your life is outside of work, um, that is a different kind of goal, right? So is that uh, maybe what you want to do is creative writing or you want to do public facing writing that won't necessarily count for tenure, but is a kind of service to your community. Or maybe your activist work is really important and it doesn't necessarily connect with your teaching and research. So those long-term goals are gonna shape the kind of service requests you say yes and no to. And then finally, just to go down to the more granular level, uh, think about what your daily priorities are. How do you wanna organize your days? So for example, it's important to me to have a lot of um, time when I'm not on campus. I'm expected to be on campus a lot. I have a high teaching load and a high service load that's part of my contract um, because I'm not research faculty. So, um, but I have a lot of other priority things I wanna do with my life. And uh, so I make sure to only sign up for agree to do service activities that happen on days of the week where I'm already planning to be on campus. Tiny thing, but thinking about those daily priorities and what really matters to you will help you understand what you're saying yes or no to when you say yes or no. So, when should you say no? First, think about who's asking for this service. Will saying no put your daily work life at risk? And the reason I put it like this on the slide is because uh, sometimes saying no won't necessarily hurt our chances at promotion and tenure, for example. But if we say no to certain people, sometimes they can make our daily lives really challenging. If that's the case, if you have, say, a chair who um, who's not great at working with others or giving you space, uh, talk to other people out that chances are it's not just happening to you. Talk to other people who've worked with a faculty member and, and ask like how, how people have negotiated this before. Uh, sometimes saying no feels like it'll put your daily work life at such a risk that it's worth saying yes to, but that's a last resort. Almost always those difficult feelings after the no will, uh, will ease off and ease out over the course of a few, you know, of, of a few weeks. And uh, it's much better to risk that than put yourself in a position where you've got this new workload um, stuff that you don't really want uh, in perpetuity. So think critically about sort of who is asking and what saying no might look like. Then at, think about what's being asked of you. Uh, does it align with your short or long-term goals or daily priorities? So. For example, the public humanities program that people are, are working to build at my institution. Uh, I do a lot of public facing work and it aligns with my long-term goals about how I want to teach and be in the world. And the people who are involved are people I like working with. So that makes me less likely to say no. But if I'm asked to serve on a committee um, that is sort of tangentially related to my own um, interests, and would shape my day in a different way, in a way that, that I'm not comfortable with, more likely to say no. And think about whether or not it aligns with your values. A lot of service work feels like service for no, um, service for services sake. There's uh, this continued bloating of administrative life that uh, I find that sometimes I'm being asked to fill out forms and file annual reports for no reason um, other than the, uh, work of annual reporting. Um, so think about whether or not it aligns with your values. Uh, will the, so the question I ask myself is, will doing a service make, make my world better? And, and I say my world or your world because uh, I think that really matters. Like, will it make where you are better for you and the people you care about? And if not, then say no. There's no reason to spend your energy there when you could spend it elsewhere. 
And finally, do you have time? This is the biggest one. My goodness, you've got to be brutally honest with yourself about this. Do you really have time? You just, you've got to be real with yourself. One issue that I have had is that I will often say yes, because it's easier than saying no to a bunch of small things, because it'll only take a few hours. But once you add up all those few hours of things over the course of a semester, you can end up with an extra job. So uh, it's really important to uh, to be honest with yourself about the kind of time you have. Um, I, uh, I also suggest um, always having a 24 hour waiting period before you respond. Never respond immediately. Uh, I think an easy way to do this if someone asks you for something is to say, um, Thank you for, um, for asking me. That sounds really interesting. Um, I need a few days to look at my schedule and see if it, if it will work with my other priorities. And you just say that, and it gives you a little time and space. When I first started working, I instantly just said yes to everything. Terrible. Also, I notice in a lot of um, faculty members, especially newer ones, immediately say no to everything. And that's... Um, that's okay, but it's it's kind of, um, I think it's important to think about what you might get from saying yes as well. Um, and that means being honest about your time, your priorities, and your values. All right, so let's talk about when you should say yes. And I think most talks about service, especially to newer faculty members, they would end on this slide about when you should say no. And the answer would be always. But I'm going to argue that sometimes you should say yes. Oh, but first, yeah, you can say no. That's probably the most important thing to remember. You can say no. People think that they can't say no, but you can. But when should you say yes? All right, first, who is asking? And I think it's important to consider saying yes based on who's asking, not just because like they have power over you and you have to do things, um, you can do things because they asked you um, to do it or something like that. Uh, but also, could you would saying yes help build relationships that you would value? So oftentimes, I will say yes to service requests because of the people who are involved and that they're people I want to work with, right? I want to work to build a relationship with my academic librarians because we, um, you know, for example, so I say yes to projects with them because those connections are important to me and important to uh, helping uh, build the research profile of my students, things like that, right? So uh, think about what relationships might be enabled by saying yes. Then think about what is being asked of you. Do you want to do it? Does it align with your goals and or priorities? So like for me, one thing I don't want to do is write a strategic plan. So when I'm asked to be on committees to do some strategic planning, um, I tend to say no because I find that work to be uh, uh, I, I know it's important, but for me, I find it to be kind of mind numbing and uninteresting and I don't want to do it. So uh, I think about what I want to do. And if I don't want to do it, uh, I tend to say no. But if you do want to do it and it aligns with your goals, go ahead and say yes. Um, and does it align with your values? Uh, and this, when we're talking about doing service inside institutions, I think this is really an important question. Uh, because you've got to ask yourself, are you making the institution stronger in ways that matter to you? Uh, this is something I think about with every service request. If I do this, am I making the institution stronger? And is that something I'm interested in doing? I understand deeply that institutions can't love me back. So when I think about what's important in my life and the kind of service I want to do, making an institution stronger is not always what I want to do. But sometimes it might strengthen the institution, but in ways that I think are really beneficial and align with my other values outside of the institution, in which case I might say yes. A project that moves resources out of the school and into the hands of students, for example, or into the hands of people in communities surrounding the school, I, I tend to say yes to things like that. And then the next question is, do you have time? And again, you've just got to be really honest about this. Um, Often, one of the things that I confronted uh, as I moved institutions is that there are more and more things I want to say yes to. And this surprised me because I was trained by um, grad other graduate students, other young faculty, older faculty to always say no. But there's a bunch of stuff I want to say yes to. 
I want to advise the student organization that picks up leftover food from campus events and delivers it off campus to places where people need food. I want to be on the roundtable discussion at the Women's Center about what it's like to be fat. I want to do, you know, I want to uh, be a judge for the student drag show. There's all kinds of stuff I want to say yes to. Uh, so I have to be really discerning, and I encourage you to do this as well, to be really discerning about how much time you actually have. Because once you say yes and you commit, the follow through is super duper important. So if you don't have time and you're not going to be able to follow through, then don't say yes. But if you can, do. I think it's important to pick one or two things that will enrich your life and enrich the ways you want the institution to operate and say yes to those and say no to everything else. So I wanted to um, end with this slide to remind you that you can say yes. People will tell you over and over to just say no, but sometimes saying yes opens up possibilities you'll value. It really is okay to say yes. You've just got to be clear about why and, and how it will help. Also know that once you say yes, you're not trapped forever. You can say no later, um, but I encourage that only um, you know, only if while you're doing it, you discover that you don't have time or something like that. But saying yes should be with the idea that you're going to follow through with the project. So we've got um, some further resources at Ideas on Fire that I thought would be helpful for thinking about these questions uh, about service. Uh, the first is um, a list of readings about emotional labor. And we thought this would be uh, interesting to read from the perspective of service because the uh because of the emotional labor of saying yes and no but also the kind of labor that we do um if we are uh members of marginalized groups in the academy uh that is itself a whole bunch of service um next we have a webinar on surviving job burnout and service is one of the things that i think burns out a lot of faculty members because once we start doing it, so much of it feels so pointless, like we're filling out annual reports that no one will ever read or we're tracking numbers that no one actually cares about, things that just go into a folder and no one looks at again. Uh, and it's a ton of it's a ton of work. And so how do we survive that job burnout and use uh, service maybe as a way to re enliven our jobs? Then we've got. Um, uh, some reading about healthy boundaries, because those are really hard to set in the academy, especially when we're getting pushed by and from so many different sides to say yes to so many different extra projects. So here's some reading about setting healthy boundaries. And then finally, we have um, a webinar on work-life balance in the context of power. And this looks especially at how to say yes or no when we are contingent faculty, when we're adjunct faculty. Uh, when when the power is aligned against us right and and how do we how do we figure out how to navigate there and how to make good choices for ourselves so these are some things that um, that you might find interesting when thinking about how to say yes and no to service all right so now i'm going to come back to um to all of you hello i'm back um so that's what we we're going to uh, what I had on tap for today to chat about service requests. Uh, anyone have any um, ideas or examples or times they've said yes or no, or questions about how to do that? If you do, you can type them in that box. All right, well, thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Um, I hope that uh, it was helpful to have some of this stuff articulated and, uh, and I hope that we all make good choices for ourselves about what, uh, about what kind of service we wanna do and what kind we wanna say no to. I've gotten uh, increasingly um, better at saying no and increasingly better at saying yes to things that matter to me and actually spending the time to do it. So that I think is, those are skills that one develops over time and uh, I wish us all good luck in developing them and living the lives we want, not just making an institution run because that's only a tiny part of what we're on earth to do. All right, well, thank you so much and hope you'll join us next time uh, for another Ideas on Fire webinar.